Hey folks, Dan Freer here, the Mortgage Update. It is October 1st. Happy October, everybody. So, if you watch or you're at my channel, you're probably checking to see what happened today in the markets, especially what's going on with mortgage rates. Well, you can see right here that the stock market got pounded down 261. We're going to get to that to a second on what happened. Um, but you might also see right through here, mortgage-backed securities were up 20 at one point. Huge move. But we only ended the day up five. So it was a good time periodically throughout the day to possibly lock if you caught that. I did catch it on about 10 loans. Uh, and then uh, rates kind of ease back down or back up again. Um, so let's go through this. If you're new to the channel, we watch this. This is a mortgage-backed securities market. And we watch this number right here. This is the price of the bonds that dictate the interest rates on mortgages. It's not the 10-year treasury. It's not you know any other indexes. It's the mortgage-backed securities market. Uh, so that's one misconception that a lot of people have. Uh, so we're going to go over this in a second, but I like to cap, um, you know, what happened in the markets. So we see that it was down 261. I'm going to show you or, or go over what, what happened, and then we're going to see what's happening in pre-markets for tomorrow. And then I want to give, at the end of this, this video, I want to give a little guidance to some people that are looking to flip homes. So manufacturing index came out today, and it was bad. It was a, it was so bad it met um, the the last time we hit, had this bad of a manufacturing number, uh, and that shows basically how the manufacturing sector in the U.S. is is doing. Its production was down to the lowest level since June of 2009. That took a toll on on the markets. So when the markets heard that or got that number, the fear was that kind of threw gas on the fears of the recession that's coming up or that everybody's predicting. So because of that, people, what they do is they flee to safety. So what do I mean by flee to safety? So you know the stock, if, if we go into a recession, the stock market's going to get pounded, as we saw it today a little bit. So what people do is they, they sell stocks, and instead of putting that money under their mattress, they try to put it into something that has yield meaning that has some kind of rate of return, because if you put it in the mattress, you're at zero. And then between inflation and everything else, you're losing money. So that's what happened today. The manufacturing number came out. Tomorrow, we're going to see employment numbers come out. That could also play a big role in this. Um, <clears throat> the employment numbers, and we also, or I also watch for wages. What's happening with wages? Because if wages start to spike up, that could spur, or the Fed looks at that as possibly inflationary. So they might look to raise rates or do nothing, or not, not you know, kind of stay on the sidelines for right now. But all the indicators that we're coming up with right now, the manufacturing numbers being slow, um, fears of a recession coming up, the, the global or worldwide slowing down of production and everything else between tariffs and, and things, is that's giving... You know, leeway to the Fed coming in again, and I don't think they'll do it this year. They might, if these numbers keep coming in bad, but they might come back in and start to reduce rates again. And I think we're going to see another quarter point a rate reduction within the next six months, if not more, on the rate reduction. I don't mean the term. In the next six months, I see at least a quarter point off of the federal funds rate, if not more. So here's here's a recap of, of what you can watch. If you're in, you know, if you're in real estate, you're looking to buy homes, you're in the mortgage business, a lot of people use this as a training tool each night to see what's going on in the market and what I'm predicting that it's going to happen tomorrow. And do we lock in our clients to today's rates or do we wait? So I would say, or let, let, let these keys be a point to you. Bad news in the economy, bad world news, such as bombings, other things of that sort, the tariff wars and bad stock market all equal a great opportunity for mortgage rates because what happens is all with all that uncertainty again we have the fear so when there's fear in the markets people end up to, you know fleeing to safety safety is bonds mortgage backed securities and treasuries 
So that's what happens um, in this. So let's go on. What's going to happen? What's happening tomorrow? Tomorrow's futures. Here's what I do on this. It's, you could see pre-market trading, see after hours trading. Okay. What happens is when the market closes for you and I, institutions can still trade after hours and pre-market. You and I don't have that ability. Right now, the Dow is up. If this holds true, tomorrow the Dow is going to be up 60 points at the open. The Nasdaq is going to be up 23. SMB is going to be up 7.5. And, and again, we were down today. If we go back to here, we ended the day down 261. So that's good. that's a reversal. So basically what's, what's happening is a lot of people dumped out, got out of the market, and, I, and even like we saw in the mortgage-backed securities market here, we were up 20. That's a huge move. And then we kind of eased off. So as the, the news comes out and gets kind of deciphered and, and, and diluted through all the channels, you usually see a little bit of a comeback or, or back to stability. So tomorrow, you know, we had a big sell-off in stocks. Tomorrow, the, the stock market, if it hold, this holds true, is going to open up which is good news. So let's get back to here. What's going to happen with mortgage-backed security? So let's get to the technicals. We just, this is a big, this is a nice little chart here. What this is telling me is right here, this, these numbers are here, these, these candlesticks, this is the price of the bonds. So as prices went down, yields went up. It's about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, rates had a nice run up. Since then, we've been coming back. So if you watch my channel, there's what we call uh, floors and ceilings, okay? And right now the floor is here and the ceiling is here. Really, if everything holds true, trends, we should, you know, trade in this, in this range. But again, what I always say is with the world going the way it's going right now, especially with Trump's tweets, Trump can tweet and we could plummet in a day or two as you could see here you know so in a normal market and that's what we're when we're watching these technicals in a normal market this is what's going on the cool thing here is this right here is a 50-day moving average of these numbers this is a 25-day moving average very rarely do you see them come this close so this is telling me we're at a solid point right here with this is probably you know with this being the new floor and this being the new ceiling we're probably going to get more uh, or better rates in the next few days. So I am not locking right now. I'll say cautiously, and I'm always going to say cautiously in today's world, because again, a bomb in the Middle East, a Trump tweet on tariffs can really turn this market. But if everything stays stable and there's really no, you know, big blips in the in in any news, you're probably going to see tomorrow interest rates kind of come back a little bit more, meaning get a little bit better. Okay, so that's my prediction on what rates are what rates are going to do, and then um, also, you know, we went over what's happening in the stock market. Now, let me just I'm going to dive into this, and I was just going around trying to look at mortgage rates and find some information for you, and this was kind of um, alarming to me. I guess is the best way to put it. Lending to house flippers hits 13-year high. Let me give you some guidance. I, in 2006 to 2010, I was flipping a lot of homes as well. And I had the ins with a lot of companies because I could get pick up foreclosures directly from the lenders. Um, so I was getting really good prices on homes. I mean, phenomenal prices on homes. The word of caution that I'll give you is this says house flippers are using mortgages to flip. It's not that easy. I've been in the mortgage business for 30 years. You can get loans. Um, to rehab homes but it's not as easy as you think you you do need money down you know all these companies that come out saying you know flip use use other people's money be careful when you do that the reason being is it's always what we call hard money basically it's kind of like you know sharp money you're probably going to pay you know fees and those fees they'll call them points okay they might call them discount points don't be deceived they might say well it only has five points what those five points are, it's 5% of the loan amount. So if you need 100 grand, that's $5,000 you're going to pay. Plus, a lot of them have uh, crazy rates. Plus, they're going to charge you a, a, additional fees to get that loan. So watch that. 
The next other piece of caution that I will throw out there is where I had mistakes, I didn't have my thumb on the pulse of what I was doing. So unless you kind of can you know, dedicate a lot of time and effort to this, my two cents is please be cautious. And you might want to just invest in you know, other forms of, of you know, investments. Um, because when you get into a house, it's not like you know, with a stock you buy it and it's, if, you, if things are going kind of south, you just click on a button on your computer and it's sold. In this, you're going to buy a house. Your closing fees are going to be two, three, four, five thousand dollars. Then to sell it, you might sit on that property for a month, two, six months, a year, paying property taxes, homeowners insurance. Then to sell it, you're going to have to pay a, a commission to the the realtor to sell it, plus another five, six, seven thousand dollars in closing fees. So be careful. So that's my tip of the day. So. I hope you like what you see. If I could be any, any help to you, just so those who don't know, my name is Dan Frio. I'm a mortgage lender in the Chicagoland area, but I can cover almost the whole country. If you have any, uh, you want me to post any additional information, like, you know, what's a good first time home buyer program? Um, you know, how much down payment do I really need? You might be, you know, you might be um, surprised when I say 3%. That's all you need to buy a home. So if you want some of my guidance and to get one-on-one -on -one counseling, just give me a call at 844-775-LOAN, and LOAN is 5626. Or you can shoot me an email at dfrio, which is F-R-I-O, at parksidelending.com. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you would. I return every comment question that's down there. And if you want to call me, I will answer the phone personally, believe it or not. So God bless. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and see you tomorrow.